you know, to, to create chaos. Oh, I, I just want some good news. Oh, Did my God. Did you good news? Well, it's yeah. deliberate. It's obviously yeah. deliberate. Of course, this is your follower. <laughs> Tell you to vote, 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 but if you don't have any good people to vote for, then who are you going to vote for? Rhetorical. Everything yeah. is just. Uh, in the end. We have no options. options anymore. We have no options. It seems like we have no options. I'm going to vote for the American. What the fuck is going on? Is a Fiji Mermaid sponsored special broadcast. Your Canadian 2021 federal election political resource. On September 13th, 2021, I spoke with Conservative Victoria riding candidate Hannah Hodson. Hannah is a University of Victoria graduate and she has spent the last seven years serving British Columbians. She has worked for the BC government and she is passionate about advancing the LGBTQ T plus equality and rights, protecting the environment and tackling the affordability crisis that has driven up the cost of living for all Canadians. Thank you so much, Hannah, for joining me today. This is really wonderful to chat. And thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. It's important to be able to get this information out to the student populace at large and anybody who does tune in to CFUV, because it is more than just strictly um, students, good diversity. But yeah, I, I want us to begin with uh, an opportunity for you to dig a little bit deeper and connect your own personal experience to the Conservative Party as well. So I'd love to talk about the fact you being a UVic uh, recent grad and knowing the financial pressures that are placed on students. How do you see your experience as a student aligning with the values of the Conservative Party? Well, thank you for having me and thank you so much for the questions. You know, yeah, I went to UVic, I got my degree there a few years ago now. I say recent, I, I feel old. I'm, it's been a few years now. Uh, and I, I do miss it though. You know, it's, I was, I was, I'm sad that due to COVID, I can't spend more time on campus meeting students. It's just, you know, we have to be really careful, but, you know, following all public health orders. But um, yeah, so that's, that's a shame. Hopefully, you know, when things get a little better, uh, I can spend more time at UVic. Uh, but ultimately, yes. I mean, I think there are obviously I mean, uh, severe financial pressures based on students. I mean, specifically, there are many, and I, I will go through many of them. But ultimately, I think the biggest one is housing. Um, I think that if I were to poll a thousand UVic students, a thousand would say they're worried about housing. Uh, and that's true of everyone in the region. And I think that um, <clears throat> the values of the conservative party very much align with that because one of the things one well, some of the things we're really focused on is affordability and on increasing access to housing making housing more affordable more accessible more secure and in making cost of living less uh difficult i mean frankly i mean anyone who's bought groceries in the last few years can say that it's uh, some things especially some things have significantly increased um, housing has increased, transportation, you know, everything, things have increased. We had a little blip last year, but the cost of living has increased across the board. And I think the Conservative Party is really laser focused on uh, addressing that and figuring out ways that we can make things more affordable for people because, you know, cost of living has risen more than, than paychecks have uh, for a long time. So, I mean, again, I'm, I'm, you're probably going to hear the word housing a lot because I think that's an incredibly important aspect and incredibly important to students. I mean, I know that UVic, like many universities, um, on-campus housing is just not even close to meeting the needs of the entire student population. I mean, I never had it. I had to live off campus, and I think a, a huge amount of people do. And then you're in difficult situations. I mean, I like, you know, when I first moved to Victoria, I went to school, I bounced around to different homes a couple times due to, you know, not safe living environments and, and, and difficult situations. So I think making sure that housing is, is more affordable, but also more accessible, and more secure for people. And another thing that I would just, um, I, so I think that the, the values of the Conservative Party, frankly, significantly align with students, especially, I think more so than people even think. I think there's this idea, you know, I was a UVic student, I know this idea that conservatives are some, they're not here, they're, 
they're somewhere else. Um, and, you know, but, but I think that honestly, you know, this platform, Canada's Recovery Plan, is really speaking to how to help people, how to help people make lives living more affordable, how to help people make their lives more secure. And I think that that will make a huge difference for the students of Quebec. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. That was really, really thorough and great there. Uh, now, actually, I'm going to give you an opportunity to <laughs> more into the, you know, the conservative platform as well. Now, we obviously people can access all the details online um, and they can learn more about Aaron O'Toole, of course. But would you mind giving sort of a, an overview of your like, you know, top pieces of the platform, you know, at, at this point in your in your opinion for everyone to hear? I mean, certainly. I mean, there's lots of things. Um but I will, I think I'll stick to the ones that I think are most relevant here on the South Island and most specifically the most relevant to students. I mean, I mentioned housing and specifically some of the measures that we're gonna look at for housing is to uh, focus on the party commits to building a million homes across Canada over three years. And I think people hear three years and they're like, that seems a lot. That's the scale of what's needed. Um, specifically focus on encouraging investment in purpose-built rental because a huge problem we've seen, I think everyone knows that, you know, purpose-built rental, it's just not much built about after about the 1970s. And it's because, you know, there were issues with the tax code and changes. And we need to encourage and incentivize purpose-built rental because purpose-built rental is much more secure rental housing than other sorts of rental housing. Uh, banning uh, foreign purchasers who don't want to live here. You know, we want to be welcoming. We want to welcome people to our communities and to our country, but not if you're just going to park money and see housing as just a safe investment. Housing should be for people to live in. And also another thing is to focus on density around public transit, because I mean, especially for students, that's a huge thing because you know, well, people don't have vehicles and um, having transit, having uh, more housing available near transit uh, is a big deal. Another thing that I think people are really passionate about here that I'm very passionate about is protecting the environment. Uh, it is a huge personal passion of mine. It's something I work on in my professional life outside of the whirlwind of the campaign. And I think that the Conservative Canada Recovery Plan has a plan to secure the environment that is a effective and rational and really serious plan um, to meet our, our, our climate commitments. Uh, you know, I think one of the big things that I, I'm very proud of is, is the plan commits to taking things that we do well here in BC already, because frankly, BC is, is a leader in Canada on the environment, you know, low carbon fuel standard, renewable natural gas standard, things like that, the BC frankly does better than anyone else and expanding them nationwide. Because there's no point, there's no reason to reinvent the wheel. It's what can we take best practices and frankly, best practices are here and to, uh, and to expand that, you know, zero, zero emission vehicle mandates, making sure that the percentage of vehicles sold have to be zero emissions because that will help supply and make them more available and more affordable. You know, many other things, making sure that uh, a, a price on carbon, uh, you know, um, not forced on provinces, but worked with provinces uh, is also an important factor. So, you know, you know, I think this is, is it, our plan has been modeled by uh, highly esteemed researchers in the environmental field to meet our climate commitments. And I think that that is a, a, a very important thing for me and it's something I'm very proud to run on. Another thing that I would like to talk about specifically, because I know that it was important to me as a student, I'm not going to speak for everyone, but I think it is important to many students is access to mental health resources. Um, that was, you know, a, a very important for me as a student, and I think that they're very important to me, me now. <laughs> and I think that uh, that's a challenge, uh, frankly, that we have in this country. And our platform, Canada's Recovery Plan, commits to a mental health action plan to make sure that there are more resources available for people. Um, uh, nationalized three-digit uh, suicide hotline. So no one has to Google what's my local one when they're in a time of crisis. Um, focusing on the opioid epidemic, treating it like a health problem, which of course it is. Um, folk helping provinces to increase resources through, through health transfers in order to help provide resources for people who are struggling with addiction. Because I, I mean, I have my own struggles with addiction. I am 11 years sober and that recovery journey is very important. And when people say, I, I'm, I'm ready for help, I need help, I'm, I'm ready to start a recovery journey, that window is so small. And we need to make sure that we have the resources in place. So to put a hand out to someone and say, we're here to help you. You know, and I think that um, you know, many other aspects of the Mental Health Action Plan that I think would really speak to, to speak to students. And just one, um, in the, again, more, but one more thing I'd like to mention specifically, because I think students, you know, as, especially as you get closer to graduating, it's what am I gonna do after? And so I think that that is 
uh, focusing on you know ec economic development and job creation. Uh, you know, there's a, a job surge in order to help pay the cost for new hires uh, in our platform, which I think will make a, a big difference for students because, of course, if you're just graduating, you're probably a new hire. Um, incentivizing small businesses and uh, and so that they can get through now, so they can thrive later. Because I think that, especially on the South Island, we are, are blessed with a lot of you know small businesses and a character of our community is improved by a lot of these small businesses and to help them and to focus on innovation because you know that's been frankly an area where Canada has failed um, in terms of technological and scientific information you know figuring out ways in order to incentivize patent development and creating new technologies and scaling up businesses scaling up startups because frankly we don't do a very good job of it uh, because most people, if they figure out something great, they sell it to an American company and all the jobs go down there. And so we need to create jobs here, incentivize production here and, 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 and innovation so that the graduates from UVic can get the jobs of tomorrow and today and find, you know, pros prosperity in their own lives. Beautiful. Thank you so much. That's a really awesome thorough job you did there and also <laughs> your own words. Yeah. All right. Because these are just snapshots, you know, yeah. we can talk more. But yeah. thank you so much for chatting with me so far and just giving everybody such a great load mm -hmm. of information. In closing, I would love to get your perspective um, in being a personal advocate for the LGBTQ T plus community mm -hmm. and knowing the student experience. Can you give a bit of advice for first time voters? And yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, I mean, my first, my biggest advice for first time voters is to vote. I mean, it's especially, you know, we know that there's, there's due to COVID, it's, it's a little tougher this year. Um, there's a little less options, less polling places, but you, you got to get out there. Um, you, you, you have to, like everyone who's listening to this, please get out there and vote. It's so important. People might think, oh, you know, whatever, whatever, but it's incredibly important. It's, you know, we have rights and responsibilities and voting, I think, you know, is, is responsibility we have, a civic duty to make sure that we have our voice heard and it, it, it matters. Um, trust me, as someone who's ran and ran campaigns, each vote we, we take very seriously and each vote is precious. And so if everyone here um, can make sure that they vote and you know, there's more information on candidates than, than there's ever been before. You know, everyone has uh, websites and I'm sure that, you know, the students listening are probably, you know, much more tech savvy than I am. And so can figure out where to find uh, all of this information. And honestly, one thing that I think that most people don't avail them of, if you have questions, contact the campaigns. I, I spend quite a bit of time speaking to voters and answering questions um, and, and talking to them about their priorities and their concerns. Um, and that's, that's important and, and more people should avail themselves of that. So if you have questions, don't, don't just go, well, I think this is, this is, reach out to campaigns, reach out to all the campaigns, ask them questions and they will respond to you. And I think that's really important for people to know. That's really great information. I've been really, just in passing, I've been really enjoying um, the advice that people have been giving. It's been mm -hmm. fantastic, really encouraging. It has been great chatting with you. Well, thank you. I look forward to seeing you at the debate later. That should be very interesting. Yeah, I look forward to it. Thank you for chatting with me, Hannah. I respect that you have found a political community that is in line with your own beliefs and want to share it with the world. Thank you for sharing it with me and giving me the chance to get to know you a bit more. Good luck with the election. What the Beep is conducted on the unceded Coast Salish territory of the Lekwungen and Wasanish nations.